Welcome, everybody. Welcome to today's session. Um, if you're enjoying lunch in the back or if you just enjoyed lunch, um, I know that can sort of like settle down, but take a seat here, chill out. Uh, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, welcome at Hot, Hot or Hyper, How to Handle Big Data, or otherwise known as How to Handle Big Data and how Hyper is going to sort of help you um, in that journey of achieving those big data strategies and building empowering, engaging dashboards for the entire organization. Um, this blurb, um, I hope everyone has seen. Please do not read all of it, uh, because it's just a screenshot from TC19 website. Um, but we just want to talk a little bit about what today's session will be about. And the main focus is how we, uh, today is going to be on how are you going to visualize big data. We all know we have those big pools. It's sitting in the data lake. But if you want to query it, uh, it becomes something different, right? If you want to show all that data on that dashboard. And that's where Hyper comes in. That's how we can start leveraging all the technologies that Tableau has to offer to build those engaging dashboards, no matter they're uh, um, sort of aggregated up or all the way down into the data lake. Uh, today's session is listed as advanced because we do assume some working knowledge on Tableau. Uh, please do not feel threatened by that. Uh, hopefully our explanations are clear enough for all, uh, but we're not going to sort of explain every, every topic here. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, all sessions at TC are recorded. Um, so uh, if you want to take pictures of the slides, that's fine. If you want to take notes, that's fine as well. Um, if you just want to sit back, relax, um, that's more than fine as well. You get all the slides and recordings and all of that after uh, this year's conference. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what today's agenda is all about. We're going to just briefly touch upon what's big data anyway. It's been a term in the field for years and years and years. What is it and what is it definitely not? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about bit Tableau's big data focus and the things that we've developed and sort of evolved over time to keep or to at least help you and support you in getting that big data to the wider organization. Obviously, we're also going to talk a little bit about Hyper and what that technology is and how it can help you. And all of that should um, bring you to the big data framework. Um, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's sort of the hot, warm, cold framework, which will allow you to bring that massive amount of data to the wider organization. Um, let's just say, because during today's uh, presentation, especially the framework, we're going to be handing out a few secret weapons. Um, things in Tableau that you can leverage and switch on and off and really empower your solution. So basically, just consider yourselves all being recruited by MI6. Um, and we're going to be your cues and handing out all of those uh, gadgets and secret weapons along the way. I mean, who didn't want to have that super cool James Bond car, right? I definitely have. Yes. I always want to have that, that watch with the, the lasers shooting out of it. Amazing. My, my big dream. Yeah, welcome, <laughs> everyone. I am, um, I'm Marius, and I would say there was so much information. Let's actually introduce ourselves as well. So who are we? Uh, Tableau, you, you might have noticed we're not from, from the States. Tableau flew us over from London. We're both based in the London office. And we're here to show you the latest and greatest when it comes to big data analytics. So we work for Tableau, Tableau but maybe on the side we work for the MI6 or other secret agency, we can't really tell you if, if that would be the case anyway. No, and if anyone's sort of worried about his German accent, I checked, he's not Blofeld. Um, but if someone sees a whack, white cat walking around, please notify me and the authorities as quickly as we can. A joke for the James Bond enthusiasts. Oh, right. yes. Yeah, you, you need to be <laughs> in crew for that one. Yes. yes. So I'm, I'm from Germany um, indeed, but I don't have any, any goals to rule the world anytime soon. I promise, I promise, I promise. Um, before handing out secret weapons to Tableau customers, I was working for one of the largest utility, co utility companies in Germany. And yeah, they have over 20 million customers. And a lot of those syst data systems were, um, were massive, right? They would classify as, as big data. And that was, for me, the introduction into big data systems, into Hadoop and all these technologies that I can where I can leverage that knowledge now with our Tableau customers, which is quite exciting. And I'm joined here by Erwin, the Dutch mastermind, <laughs> as I'm uh, calling you. <laughs> mastermind is, uh, is a little bit of an exaggeration. I think I'm more of the John Cleese version of Q. Um, but yes, my name is Aaron Falaar. I am a product consultant here at Tableau. Been with Tableau uh, three years and two weeks. 
um, and currently also manage our product consulting team for Tableau's NEMEA region, which to us is Benelux, Nordics, Middle East, and Africa, which is quite a big patch, and I'm from one of the smallest countries in there. Uh, I am Dutch. Uh, just so we get these questions sorted, yes, I am Dutch. No, I do not have weed on me. There's enough in Vegas so it's, as a, already. Like we, I smell it more than back home. Um, <laughs> my journey to Tableau is a little bit uh, different. Um, I actually came to Tableau as a customer. I worked in healthcare, was a manager of occupational health service, um, really did not have a grip on my business until we got Tableau, fell in love, uh, and eventually made the move and moved to London uh, to start working for Tableau. So um, that's enough introductions and all the rest. Let's talk a little bit about big data. That's why we're here today um, and basically what it is. Yes. What is big data anyway? Let's start with a few definitions, shall we? So in the last, let's say, five to 10 years, the requirements for data architecture changed quite drastically. So we wanted to use uh, much more much more data, higher data volumes, and a higher variety of data. So from social media platforms maybe, from machines, from log files, um, structured, unstructured data. And it kind of outgrew the capabilities of traditional data warehouses and traditional um, databases. So that's where big data systems came along and uh, filled that, that gap. So we were able to, um, to store large amount of data for quite cheaply and use the, that data for wherever we need it, for whatever use case we need it. And the umbrella term here is typically the big data lake. So that's why we have that beautiful lake on the, on the slides as well. Um, the, and a lot of my customers have invested quite heavily into those big data systems and architecture. And the, the big challenge, the big question is then, how do we get value out of that, out of those systems, out of the data we store in those systems, right? And as we were, were at a Tableau conference, we obviously want to connect and use that data with, with Tableau. So I would say, let's jump right in. So I'm here in Tableau desktop, and as Erwin said, you're all double agents today. And you need intel, right? You need information. And we're a cutting edge organization. So our data is, of course, in a big data system. In this case, it's in a Hadoop cluster. And that's amazing, right? We can connect to it like with any, any other data source. So if you simply search for Hadoop, we were able to select the, the flavor of Hadoop here. And then connect to that system. So to get to our, to our data, let's have a look. What data we're dealing with. So we, are, we work for a, um, um, information and intelligence company. So we are dealing here with uh, criminal records. So we, we're looking at our most wanted criminals in, and that's in our uh, database. So we're looking at uh, names and all their criminal activity over time. We're connected here live, so we're leveraging the underlying technology, right? Which is amazing. So we're connected now to our big data system, super easy, and now we can start uh, analyzing that data, right? So let's start by bringing in the number of records, or let's, <laughs> let's actually check the number of, of crimes. That was cash already. But um, we start analyzing that data now, right? So we want to quickly find insight in that data. We want to find the data that's relevant for, for us. And then this happens. We have to wait. We have to wait um, quite, a, quite a long time to actually get any results back. I'm already on Instagram. Exactly. Yeah. In, in our <laughs> current day and age, we, we don't have that, that focus anymore. So now we finally have a result. And there was a super simple query. And as you've seen here, it's not even a large data set, right? So we are connected to a big data system. The data is not even very, very large, but we have that overhead of a slow performance because we're connecting here via, via Hive. So I know a lot of my customers struggle with that a little bit. Anyone here in the room who have experienced that, who was, who was connected to Hive, and wow. then you see that, oh, that's a, like half the room at least, at right? At least, yeah. Um, 
where you just see that spin around, you get frustrated, right? Because with Tableau, it's all about blazing fast analytics, building beautiful content, but if you have to wait 20 seconds every time you change something, it's pretty much impossible to work, right? So that, that unease of waiting, and it feels a bit uncomfortable, right? Uh, waiting, waiting for that query to finish, so to, to kind of start with that, there is technology out there that solves these problems, so that you can connect and analyze data blazingly fast, which although you're dealing with yeah, massive, humongous amounts of data. So let's imagine we want to analyze New York taxi trips, right? So we know a, a certain a target used the, the taxi in New York. Now we're connected to an Exasol database, and let's have a look how that works. So we just, so similar thing, we look at the number of records, and it's instant, right? Although we're dealing here with 1.4 billion records, and we can just drag and drop exactly how we want to work within, within Tableau, right? Drag and drop, and we get an instant result, and we can follow our analysis path further, further down and ask the, the follow-up question. And so the, the technology is there, the big data, Volumes can be, can be dealt with and can be analyzed, but that's not the, let's say, the, the silver bullet. We still have to bring that back to the big data framework that we're gonna talk about today. And one of the main success factors that are typically overlooked are the people. You should always think about who are you building that content for, what kind of questions are people asking towards that data, how quick does it actually have to be, right? Um, you might have a certain requirement within where the data on the query has to come back within sub-seconds. Maybe you can wait five seconds, 10 seconds, depending on the, on the use case, right? So we always recommend starting at the use case and with the people in mind, and then work your way down and apply the frameworks we're gonna talk about and uh, align the right technologies. Because that's what the session then becomes is about today, right? Big data is everywhere, it's large, and it has a high velocity and all those other things. But how are we then going to leverage Tableau to start bringing all that data together, regardless of its volume, and start building those, those, uh, those, those engaging dashboards that really uh, enthrall all, whether you're business users and you want it sub-second, or you're a data scientist and your definition of performance is a little bit uh, different, and you just want that granularity of that data. Um, so with that, what, let's talk a little bit about how Tableau has already been supporting. We've seen Marius already using our Hadoop uh, native connectors, uh, but how did Tableau sort of evolve in supporting those big data uh, technologies? Yes, so that's the big data focus, and it's primarily the focus of you, of our customers. So that's what we got as feedback and which are the three main elements our customers look at when it comes to big data analytics. So number one is connectivity, right? We need to be able to connect to our big data systems, to our databases, wherever they, they might, might sit. And we constantly release new connectors, new native connectors that you guys can leverage. So for instance, in the, in the last release, we released uh, Databricks, the Databricks connector, which is quite a, um, quite a hot topic in, in big data systems and analytics um, as a whole. Um, then we need performance, right? I just showed you that example. Um, it, it's unworkable if we have to wait 20 seconds for every query to come back. So we need to design and work towards uh, high performance and use the, the, the Tableau um, le or elements that, um, or the the best practices in Tableau to achieve that performance. Let's call it, uh, say it that way. And then, of course, the, the discovery. We need to be able to explore the data further, ask the further questions, but as well, as we've seen um, yesterday with Tableau Catalog, for instance, we need to be able to find the right data set and um, share that with others and let others find that, enable others with that data. And one of the key enablers here that uh, within Tableau is the hybrid data strategy, so you can combine in-memory and live queries. We were, we see, we've seen two different um, live queries already, right, towards the Exasol and then the Hadoop cluster, very, very different experiences. 
but it's designed for flexibility and for, um, for being adaptable to, what, to your needs. And the, the overall UI is always the same. It doesn't matter what underlying data source you're, you're dealing with and how you connect to it. Let's double click into each of those. So the Live Query engine supports the world's largest databases and fastest databases like Exasol, right? Like a Hadoop cluster, um, like a SQL Server as well. And it really, whatever you have, you're able to leverage your investments. You use those investments in your analytics. Um, and then you push down, by pushing down the workload, um, if your data source can, uh, can perform in that way as you need, right? If that's not the case, maybe you have a slower, slower database, then you might want to bring that data into memory, extract it into our in-memory engine to accelerate the performance and the queries, have fast performance with large data sets. And you can actually optimize those extracts as well. You can aggregate the data further to reduce the data volume, but speed up um, the queries and um, optimize the, the overall extract. And that's where Hyper comes in. That's basically what Hyper is, right? It's our, it's our in-memory data, uh, data extract um, uh, technology. So Hyper replaced our old sort of extract file type, Tableau Data Extract, uh, just over two years ago now. Um, and it's still continuing to develop. And actually, this year is the most amount of uh, uh, sessions at TC regarding Hyper and Hyper API. Um, uh, Hyper is, is, a, is a technology that doesn't only just optimize the query speed performance, but also the extract creation performance. And it's speeding up uh, both of those processes. And in that sense, it's really helping out businesses. Now, how does Hyper itself do that? Um, first of all, Hyper takes a very particular approach to parallelism. And it really leverages all of the available hardware that is available uh, to, to its technology meaning that we've optimized Hyper for these modern hardware approaches. It just finds and leverages and utilizes all of the RAM and hardware that it has available to it and starts sending chunks everywhere, making sure that all those queries come back as quickly as they can. That makes Hyper as scalable as such. If you have 130 cores next to Hyper, it'll be a lot faster with the same query than you would with about 10 cores. It just utilizes every bit of technology and hardware it has to its disposal. And it's also bringing you a lot of flexibility. Um, about two releases ago, we, we, we um, uh, opened up the opportunity to have Hyper standalone nodes, really isolating the amount of hardware you're going to dedicate to Hyper, making sure that there is always enough hardware for Hyper to work on. And now in the current release with Hyper API, really allowing you to, um, to sort of connect to any data and turn it into a Hyper file. Now, in general, there's some key benefits that our customers are seeing. And they're seeing up to five times faster uh, performance with large and complex data source. Um, and that's just on the, the, the faster query execution itself. Um, but our customers also see fresher data. Because extract creation itself is a lot faster, you can run those refreshes a lot more uh, periodically if you want to. Um, and in general, Hyper supports a much, much larger um, extract than the uh, table, Tableau data extract once did. Um, Hyper genuinely is optimized for hundreds of millions of rows. Um, and then, as I already mentioned, the Hyper API, it's that new thing that we have released. Um, today's session is all about sort of how to handle big data and use the framework to make sort of successful dashboards. Um, if you want to know more about the technology in Hyper, the technology behind Hyper API, there are some research sessions this year. And the Hyper API itself will also have some hands-ons and some breakouts. And we'll send you to those specific uh, sessions at the end of, uh, of our session. Uh, but we do want to touch a little bit about the product itself. But if you want to get that nitty gritty, um, there's about eight or nine sessions that focus around Hyper and the Hyper API this year. Um, so um, on the left side, you have that data. It sits everywhere. It is whatever it is. The new Hyper API will actually allow you to use a little bit of code, um, whether you're using Python or something else, to turn that into a Hyper file, therefore basically opening up the opportunity to turn everything into Hyper. Even if we don't have a native connection available, it sits somewhere. I, know, I mean, we know we have the web data connector available, but you can now use the Hyper API to just write those things directly. 
and it gives you a lot more flexibility. It allows you to load data directly from any data source, wherever that sits, um, into Hyper, but it also allows you to do updating and data deletion and to really keep that data fresh in that high performance file type. Yeah, that's really a game changer, right, when it comes to uh, working and using Hyper within your data workflows. You can you leverage the code to build it and uh, yeah, embed it directly. Um, plus, you can finally um, change the extract, right? You don't have to reload the whole extract. You, you change the data, update the data, for instance, just with SQL, right? Yeah. You just need a little bit of code, but it's a really exciting technology. Um, is Hyper now the I win the data strategy and the big data analytics button? <laughs> I wish, I wish that was true, but not, not quite. We still, we're similar with, X, like with XSL, we have, it's a very important element of the data strategy, but we have to think about the, the bigger picture. Leave it to the Germans to give a little, to bring it down back to earth, right, from all the enthusiasm. <laughs> so, in, in thinking about and following that data strategy now, it's all about the selection of technology for the right use case, really bring that back to, to the people and how they're using the big data. So then we align the technology to the business use case. If you want, you can start asking questions like, what kind of questions are your, your people asking, your analysts asking, how quick do they need to be, how often do they ask those questions, do we need to um, make that as fast as possible, or is that more ad hoc? A customer of ours who did an amazing job applying and building a data strategy is Netflix. So think about the humongous amount of data they are dealing with, right? Every single click in their app on their website is stored and stored in their data lake and then used depending on the, the right, used in a technology that is right for, for the use case, right? So they might um, have certain batch processing um, available and want to use that data for, for batch processing, then they will use the right technology for that. Or they have a certain business dashboard where the data needs to be super fast, then they will bring that into that fast storage layer, and then at the end, you have the, the layer of the, of the use cases, right? It might be Tableau, it might be D3, it might be uh, Python or R, right? There are so many different use cases you want to use your big data for. What we really helps here to think about the big data strategy is the big data framework. The hot warm cold framework that we want to introduce, it's around for a while and it really helps to, to think about in the, right, in, the, in the right ways, in the right framework. So we're gonna start with, on the lowest level in the cold layer where we have the data at their rawest form where we really store all the data that we might need at some point. Um, it's structured, unstructured, in any form um, or shape you, you can capture it. And then you move that data further up into the warm and to the hot layer to really speed it up, to probably pre-aggregate it, to, to enrich the data and optimize it for, for analytics. So when we go further up, we decrease the, the data size typically, but in, increase the performance rapidly. And then if we want to align technologies to that uh, framework, we're gonna see Hadoop in the cold layer. It's creeping more and more into that warm layer, so there are ways to query Hadoop um, relatively performant, right, uh, and leaving the data there. Uh, typically in warm we see the relational databases, and then in hot we see the analytical databases like Exosol and Hyper sits in that layer as well. So as an example, this is purely my interpretation of this, we can align those layers to the Netflix architecture. So um, Hadoop, Hive is certainly in that cold layer. The processes like Spark and, and Presto, essentially being able to process and to query that data, they are able to uh, speed, that, uh, speed that up a little bit. And then if they want really fast analytics on top of the data, then you have the fast storage layer with Teradata, Redshift, and uh, Hyper. So how do we then translate the concepts of this conceptual hot, warm, cold framework into a solution to our business? Now, we will be building this out a little bit later on, and we'll put the caveat in now, uh, saying that 
Um, we're going to be using a few technologies, and don't get hung up on those specifically. Think about sort of the use cases that you have and the technologies that you have to your disposal, and how you can leverage a hot warm cold framework thinking in building that framework in your own organizations. But as we now walk through it, we have to think about the first step is where we're going to store that data. Where is this going to sit, maybe be stagnant a little bit, before we start bringing it into that warm layer where we want to analyze it. These are sort of the areas where your data scientists and your analysts usually typically sit. We then really need to speed that up. Typically, that's in use cases where you want to do some more uh, reporting into the organization for a wider audience, specifically things like exact reporting. They just need to be quick and snappy. And then just bringing it back to the original point that Marius made, there's a key component there, and that's the consumption component of it. The technology and just the speed and the data processing is one part of it, but then how are we going to present that to our end users, making sure that it's still consumable to the human mind, even though we might be talking about billions and billions of data points. And that's then what we're going to talk about, right? How are you going to move data from the data lake leverage Tableau and its hybrid data strategy and turn that into beautiful, glorious dashboards. Who here came to Vegas via airplane? <laughs> yeah, pretty much everyone, right, who lives here. I, I, sorry, apologies for those who actually live here. Um, so. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the data set that we're going to be using because we are going to show you how to build that hot warm cold framework right now. We have a little data set which encaptures all US domestic flights for the last 30 years. That's quite a few flights. That's quite a bit. You could probably find yourself, but it's one row per flight, so it's not that detailed. Um, and the data looks a little bit like this. It's just the flight, its origin, destination, it, it, sorry, its, its origin and its destination, and the time, whether or not it was canceled, and what the potential delay was, if there was a delay. Um, for those in a keen eye, you can see that, once again, my German colleague built this. He's trying to do some little bit of global domination, um, upfluke before departure, but we'll just uh, brush over that, shall we? Um, Straight from Frankfurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my grandpa would be so proud. Dutch and Germans on one stage, right? Who knew that? And I can joke about it as well. It's great. <laughs> oh, it's, on the, it's on the verge, isn't it? It's almost going too far. All right. Anyway, back to data. <laughs> yes. Let's start with the, the cold, with yes, the storage let's. layer, Yes. before you're drifting yes. off too much. I know, I know. <laughs> we, we have that data, all those flights from yeah, the, the 1990s in the US, um, and every row in the data set is a flight. Yes. We store that in the big data lake. In, in our case, that would be Amazon S3, very easy object storage. We just upload it, and we're good to go. Very, very cheap as well. Then the question is, how do we actually analyze that data, right? So there's quite a gap between that data lake now and the analyst or the business user. So we want to bridge that gap. So how does the data lake actually look? Really think about just your your typical, um, your computer with all the, your different files stored on top of it. Um, it's really nothing, not much, not much else. It's just uh, scalability baked in and uh, being able to run that on cheap hardware build, building clusters, right? Um, so we store the files um, of the, that flight performance data set. It's publicly available, by the way, by the FAA. And then with Hive, we're able to run SQL queries towards that data. But as you've seen before, yeah, let's, let's not use Hive for this, right? Um, won't be too, we won't set ourselves up for, for success in terms of performance. It's a little bit too slow for our use case. So what are our other options? Let's move into the warm layer, into the analyzed layer. It's a really important layer because it lets you look into what kind of data sets are important to, to yourself and to your business, so you can then select the ones that you want to speed up even further, right? By, by not moving the data around too much. So what are our options? We could go and select a, a, a different query, a query engine, something like Presto or Impala. If you haven't heard about these, don't, don't worry, but they're essentially other ways, other engines to query that, that data, okay? So let's have a quick look on and see what kind of impact that can have, okay? We, we're back in Tableau Desktop. We're connecting here 
connected to the same Cloudera Hadoop instance. It's the same table, it's the same data. We are still connected live, right? We're still pretending to be MI6, let's remember that. <laughs> yes, it's still our most wanted <laughs> database. And the only difference here is within the Cloudera Hadoop connector, you're able to specify the type, how you want to query the, the data. And you have two options here, Hive, um, talking to Hive Server 2, or Impala, right? And typically, you might not know about the differences or um, what is better, what is worse, but just be aware that this is, this is possible. And in this example, we're now using Impala to query that data. So let's have a look into, into the performance here. So I'm going to build a quick view here. And you see it's sub-second, right? It's the same data. It's the same system. It's still live. And it's completely, um, a com we see a completely different experience, completely different um, um, performance here. This is now something we can, we can work with, right? And we didn't move the data. The, the data is still in Hadoop. We just chose a different way to query that data. So that really brings us back to use the right technology for the, for the right use case. So this is how you can accelerate the data lake. So to just uh, recap here, so we went from the data lake, the storage layer, and added um, certain analyze, and, uh, analyze layer and certain technologies that let analysts and uh, data scientists use that data, analyze that data in a much more performant way, right? So it's already much, much better. Um, but what if the data gets really, really large and we want to speed that, um, the, the queries up even further? Because then we move into the, into, into the hot layer. So let's speed this, this up even further. This is where it gets exciting. Now we are handing out those, those secret weapons we were talking about. And we actually, we, we showed you one already. It's the hybrid data engine. You can choose between sending live queries to your data source or bringing that into Hyper. And you can switch back and forth as you please. So think a little bit about James Bond and his garage of cars, right? You're going to have loads of them depending on what kind of mission he's on. So he might, if he wants to go, go into a chase, he goes, goes for that Jaguar. If he goes off-road and needs, um, needs a lot of security, then he goes for the um, SUV on the, um, on the right. And it's not too much different with data, data technology, right? It's really picking the right one for the right use case. And there are so many different ones. Knowing about them and um, deploying them effectively is really the the key here. So then we're going for, um, for those technologies in that um, speed up section, speed up layer, and hyper is obviously a super important element here as well. And these are the elements you're, you have to um, um, have in your repository in terms of applying them and building an architecture and strategy that works for you. If we then go further, we want to add two more secret weapons. One is optimized ex extract. So you can, after or when you select and create that extra, you can choose to further aggregate it and optimize it. And then Tableau Prep, which gives you even further um, flexibility when it comes to designing the data set and designing the right level of detail of that data set. OK? Let's jump into those. So, we have the optimized extracts. You can pre-aggregate um, extracts, optimize. You can calculate certain calculations directly and materialize them. So the big advantage here is you get the same results on an aggregated level, vastly improved and vastly improved performance. With Tableau Prep, you can see it's, you build the whole data flow from start to end and really define the data set that you need. You can enrich it further you can then output that into, um, into the data source 
the right data source that you need. So let's start with the, the extracts. So we see a, a view. We analyze here the, the different carrier names. We have the flights, um, the number of flights per year. And maybe that is the, the, the level of detail that you need for your analysis. Underlying, we have currently super, very raw data connecting to our code, code level, which gives us every information per flight. But maybe we don't even need that, right? Maybe we build a quite a quite um, high-level dashboard, then we don't need that level of detail. So what could we do? We can go ahead and select that data source, say extract data, and then you have certain options. Like um, if you're joining here, you could go for a multi-table extract. In this case, we go for a single table. We can go ahead and filter that data further. So that's best practice to really focus on the, the data that you need for your analysis. And then you can aggregate and roll up that data as well in that extract, right? So we could say maybe we just need that data on a monthly level. Then we want to roll that up. And if you have a date field in your data set, you can roll that up on, um, on that date level. And you can um, hide, hide fields that, you're, that you don't need in your analysis. So that's super powerful. Um, we can do that, and then the, the performance will be in, uh, much, much faster compared to the, the cold layer um, that sits underneath, right? But then let's have a look at Tableau Prep as well. So I'm going to have a look at my prep flow that I prepared earlier on the Tableau server. And we see here we're connecting to our big data system on the, on the far left. We enrich that data further. We, we want further information. Clean that data up. That's um, the node in the middle. And then from there on, we split up the, the, the flow into three different branches where we then define the data for the hot layer, for the warm layer, um, and maybe for the cold layer. So we could even build that strategy just within Tableau, just within Hyper as well. And really, the, the key is to specialize the data set for the use case, right? So we might have a, da a dashboard with, with, which is looking at the overview over all KPIs, which, is, which has been used daily and has to be super fast. Then we would use that hot, hot or warm data set for that. And from here on, we can automate this, right, with Prep Conductor. We can run this on a schedule. And with our investments in that area, like writing into database and um, creating extracts in the web, this is becoming more and more powerful with every release as well. So let's jump back now. It's actually the most important part of, of data and, or big data analytics, right? Yes, um, and it feels a little bit like fat shaming that, I'm, that he's going to let me talk to you a little bit about consumption. Uh, but consumption is, of course, um, the, uh, in the end, it's the most important thing. Are you a data scientist? Are you an analyst? Are you a business user? You need to make sure that it's comprehensible and make sure that people get value from your dashboards and your, um, from your analysis. Now, when we're talking big data, hopefully we're talking an absolute humongous amount of data, billions and billions and billions of rows. There's not a single person on Earth that can instantly comprehend billions and billions and billions of, million of, of rows. You need that to be boiled down or broken up into little chunks. And that's where the concept of the human scale of data comes from. So if we're looking at the layers that Marius has just built for me by using those, uh, the, those prep flows, and remember, it's Hyper that's powering all of that. It's writing to the database. It's creating those extracts. Actually, Hyper is also the engine that, that powers prep itself. Um, we look at the layers that Marius has just built for me. And we start off with that lake, the rawest amount of data. And maybe we add something like the year or uh, sort of the day level to that. Um, we then start aggregating some data up, reducing the number of rows, and, but, but speeding it up slowly. Um, and then maybe that's the information on a week level or on a month level. And then we have that super hot layer that's going to be snappy at all times. And that might be your information per quarter or per year. Now, the technology that Tableau is will allow you to sort of have the end users interact with that data across all of those layers if we want to. And that's where the design thinking comes in. Consider the, sort of the human scale of data like um, reading a newspaper or 
um, back in the day, people had like paper iPads and they called it newspapers. Um, but let's say you have one and you take out every section that isn't sports and you throw that away. And then you're going to look at the sports that you are most interested in. And then you're going to look at the game that you were interested in or maybe the article about that particular player. That's how we want our end users to interact with this. They want to see insights and ask questions and drill down even more. But as Mario's already mentioned, the user interface from a user perspective is always the same. It's a unified user experience within that hybrid data strategy. And Marius has already mentioned that the hybrid data strategy is a secret weapon because in the end, we can now build reports that are there for the entire organization. Our analysts can now just build reports for everyone. And that's, in the end, the fourth secret weapon. First of all, of course, the fact that we have a hybrid data engine in general, but the secret sauce that links all of this together is cross data source actions. Who here has used cross data source actions before? Few hands going up, yeah. This is something that's been in the product for years, and it's it's almost why I am passionate about Tableau in general. I mean, Tableau is that query engine that automatically creates queries upon selections. And because it does that, it allows us to join data sources together without even joining them. We can just select a mark and have it drill down into the next data set. And this is where we finally bring together all of those secret weapons. We have our ejector seat and we have our souped up engine and the laser pen. And now we've got the chassis and the roof to tie it all back in. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit, yeah, does it? I am, <laughs> but this is the exciting bit, people. This is where we go. Okay, so I have a dashboard here, and this is those, all of the US domestic flights for the last 30 years. Now, that dashboard on a Hadoop cluster, I mean, we were looking at the most wanted earlier, there was 70,000 rows, that's 180 million, uh, I think, right? Or 176, or 67. Um, English, not my first language. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's never, never going to be performance. But because we have Hyper being our hot layer there, that's the fist that's being generated. It's running off of Hyper. It allows me to just hover over particular marks. And I can see that maybe for Delta in uh, 2001, about 4% of flights have been canceled, where in general, the Delta average was 1.4%. Now, when I say cross data source actions, Let's just look at the action first before I show what the end product is. So I'm just going to open up, um, and I'm also going to just enlarge this, the action window here. And I'm sure most people will be familiar with dashboard actions in Tableau. And what we basically see here is that based upon a selection, as we have here, on our performance per route, oh, sorry. Uh, let's just start off with the one I actually want to show you. The first one, there we go. So based upon a selection from our hot, I want you to filter down in my performance per route, which is the next level of granularity in the data source that Marius prepared for me earlier. Um, and this is where the cross data source comes in. In the target filters, we define which columns correspond within our uh, sort of our source um, um, worksheet and our target worksheet. When we see this in action, we go from hyper into a snowflake um, uh, data database instantly. It is because Tableau is that drag and drop. You click, Tableau creates, uh, generates a query. When we make a selection, it will just pick up delta and put it into the snowflake query instantly. Um, the key here actually is as well that we have to exclude all values until some upon deselecting. So that's basically why the other two views are currently empty, because we don't want to sort of um, initialize that, uh, the, the cold layer yet, because that will bring up that 167 million rows, and we'll be here until Christmas. Um, so with all of that said and done, um, all the actions are set. And then just to see how this works, I'm just going to switch on a performance recorder so we can see later on how this works. So we're going from our hot layer. And I can make some selections, maybe Delta uh, 2012. And within two seconds, three seconds, I get my next view. Remember, that next view is of a snowflake instance with a lot more granularity. I now have information per airport. So I can look for Delta Airlines. Its home base is Atlanta. So in 2012, it had about 0.3% cancellations for that particular airport in that particular airline in that particular year. We can look a little bit later. We might see that Southwest had like slightly higher, 1.8% canceled in 2018 and 1% overall. 
and maybe we can then look, okay, so it's Chicago Midway Airport, and when I make that selection, suddenly we go to our Amazon Athena, which will show us the performance on a daily basis. We still have to wait a little bit because it is in those files, but it's a lot quicker. There's 167 million rows in there, and it took about three to four seconds as opposed to the 20 seconds for the 70,000 rows that Maria showed earlier. So as an end user, I can clearly see that something happened on the 15th of February 2018. Um, maybe let's check it out, see if we can prevent that. Really allowing the end user f by interacting with the dashboard to explore that data, making it into consumable chunks um, for the end user in the end. Because that's what the human scale of data wants to do. People want to drill deck up or down and then maybe back up. Or maybe you didn't want to look at that particular game or at a different sport or something else. So the fact that we have those dashboards and we can combine data sets without even joining them together and we can build those layers, we can enable our end users to go in any direction um, they want to based upon those actions that we set up um, in that uh, dashboard. And that's why secret weapon number four is those cross data source actions. It's almost one of our the one that hurts us the most, <laughs> almost sort of overlooked feature. It's so powerful, it's so incredible. This is where the true power of Tableau really comes together. So when we look at that dashboard, we started off with that hot layer, just to recap what the dashboard was doing. It's that layer that's really built for dashboard acceleration, for high performance, based probably working with aggregations, and in our case, that was hyper. We then selected an airline in a year, and we went into our warm layer. In our case, that was Snowflake, but it's a layer that we sort of really want to leverage those live connections and maybe do that core report development. We then made another selection to go to the daily information, and that's where we finally drilled down into that cold layer. And in our case, that was Amazon Athena. Correct. I think this is, once again, when we stress that this is just the example that we show in this particular dashboard, or yeah, in this session and for this dashboard. There's no set rules around this, right? We really want to make sure that we think about the hot, warm, cold framework, think about our end users, think about the technologies that you have. They're not restricted to the ones that we happen to use in this example. It doesn't have to have three layers. It can be two, it can be four. Yeah. And with that, let's start our recap. Shall we, shall we show the performance recording as well? <laughs> or? Because that might it, be good as well. It could have, could have been any, any data source right now, right? Yes, that is actually true. So I'm a, I'm a business <laughs> user now uh, coming into this dashboard, and I can ask any question I want to ask towards the data. We can look into a different airline, into a different airport, right? Like, like Dallas, for instance. And then we drill down into that code layer, right? Into that daily, daily level. I just want to create more, more data points. So here we can now nicely see we have a much more granular view, a daily view of the performance of that airline and that particular airport, right? So if we then go back, stop the performance recording, that might be another feature you don't know just yet, but it's super, super powerful. This is where you see it sort of in action. You'll see those queries being picked up by Tableau. So it's creating a, a workbook where we can see now all everything that happens under the hood, right? So we yep. see every single query, and we see some three very, very large queries, right? Over seven seconds here. And these are the queries to the, to the cold layer, right? To the cold um, Athena layer. We can see actually the, the query as well. Let's have a look at one of them. So you can see that, that always gets the database admins excited, right? <laughs> Looking at the, the SQL, SQL query that's, that Tableau actually um, sends to the database. And you can see here, within those filter, um, those filter elements, you see the, uh, the operator and the airport that we selected, right? And it, it's really passing it from one layer to the other down all the way down to the code layer, OK? Now we can recap. Now, now I, you can I, recap. I had to show this. It's, good. it's always being good to be put in your place. It gets me way too excited. <laughs> cool. Let's, let's recap. So we've seen now Tableau enables big data, right? We've seen 
uh, super fast queries on over a billion uh, records. We need to think about the data strategy, though, and we should start with the people, with the use case, and then working our way back. Um, take Netflix as an example. That's a really nice architecture um, to think about. And then we align our technologies that we currently have. Even maybe we have more, more capabilities in terms of selecting the right technology and, uh, or uh, swapping out technologies, and then adding that to the big picture, to the data strategy. So then it sort of comes or gets over to you. Um, we would really hope that at least you would um, think about that hot, warm, cold framework, see where you can leverage it or at least parts of it in your own organizations. Look at those technologies that you have and the things that you can leverage. And think about Tableau's secret weapons. Um, Hyper is actually underneath the hood a lot of the time. So think of prep, think of those aggregated extracts, think of prep builder, the Hyper API, all those things are available to start aligning it to your business use case. Um, and of course, those cross data source actions. Um, he says, start with people, but also design for people. Design for interactivity, that's the major key that in, a, in the end will enable you and your end users to get value out of those massive dash, or out of that massive amount of data. Um, so in conclusion, we would always say that Tableau is great for big data, um, and it all boils down to using the right technology for the right use case, almost adding in there as well, for the right people. Now, there's only one more secret weapon we want to give to you today. Um, the, your MI6 training has sort of come to an end, um, and that's just to make sure that it's shaken and not stirred. Uh, get your martinis tonight at the bar um, and ask us about uh, if you have any other questions. Um, yeah, shall we open up for questions? Let's do that. Cool. Are there any questions in the room? <laughs>